Hi guys, Sean Church here with Fastune, and I wanted to give you just a quick hitter today on how to address an issue that's become very, very common for late model Subaru STIs, in particular 2008 and up STIs with the dual ABCS system. And the problem that people see, the basic symptom, is that the car will kind of hesitate or miss under acceleration, especially in lower gears, first, second gear, uh, between 2,500 and 3,000 RPM. And what's actually happening there is that if you look at the data logs, the car is going lean at that point, very, very lean, and it usually centers right around 27 to 2800 RPM. Uh, to see that, I've got a data log here that we put into a graphic for, graphical form, and this is between basically about 2400 to about 3000 RPM, and what you'll see is as we start to accelerate, our air-fuel ratio is nice and rich, about 11 to 1, and then it begins to go lean. We're up to 16 to 1, peaking as high as 17 to 1, and then it'll drop back down uh, to about... Um, Let's see here, it drops back down to about 11 to 1 again. So what's causing that? Because we're not targeting a different air fuel ratio there. Well, we can look and see that, first of all, our mass airflow sensor values are kind of flat through this range. But even as we stay, as the airflow value starts to come up, you can see we go from an airflow value of 35 here to about 67 here. So we almost double the mass airflow, but the vehicle is still lean. What's happening at this point? Well, we don't know exactly, but we do know that Subaru is aware that this is a problem on these cars and has actually put... Uh, procedures in place to correct for that. If we go to our map here, this is a stock map for a 2012. And this is what we're, what we're looking at right now is what we call load compensation. Okay, and this is load compensation by manifold pressure. Now, Subarus are mass airflow cars. We look at the mass of air flowing, we have a target air fuel ratio, we know our injector size, we calculate the fuel, we should be pretty close. But in this case, we know that at certain load values, at certain RPM points, that the car wants to run lean. And Subaru already knows this because you can see here, at 2,600 RPM, we're adding between uh, 12 to 18 percent more fuel than what the mass airflow table would demand. But at 2,400, we're only adding three to three to 10 percent, and by the time we get to 3,000, it's only a few percent as well. And after that, it's it's close to zero. Why would we need to do that? Well, there's probably some issues there with with perhaps some reversion in the intake pipe. We're uh, we're seeing some discontinuity of airflow or the mass airflow sensor, and as such, the reading's not accurate. Why else, for example, would we have this flat spot in our mass airflow curve? over three or four data points as the car, as the engine is accelerating. Clearly the engine's accelerating and the boost is climbing, we should be drawing more air, but we're not seeing that. That indicates to us that we're, we're, we probably have some reversion across the mass airflow sensor. Now, in addition to these tables, we can also do some things with the ABCS, particularly the exhaust cam will help that. But your primary thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go in here and look at this table. Now there's two tables to look at. You have the Excel table and the cruise table. They're pretty close and, and you may wanna just equalize them, make them both the same. But where you're going to be focused on adjusting them is going to be between 2,600 and usually 2,800 to 3,000 RPM. And this is where having a steady state dyno, a loading dyno, really, really helps because you can load the car up at a fixed RPM point and gradually ramp the load up and see where it's going lean. For example, we usually don't see a big problem down here at a load of, say, uh, APSI absolute, which is about minus 15 inches of vacuum. The big problem usually occurs right up here at just a couple inches of vacuum or even one to two pounds of boost. And if we were to go back and look at our chart here again, you'll see when we're lean, uh, right in this range right here, uh, that we're actually, we're trying to add fuel even under our fuel correction and it's still not enough, it's still going lean there. And if we look at our manifold pressure, uh, we're running about one pound of boost. So what that tells us then is our absolute pressure is gonna be about 15 and a half. So we're gonna be right in this range right here at 2800 to 3000 RPM. Now, as you can see, uh, the stock table is adding 12 to 15 percent in that range at zero boost but as we go into boost it adds less and less so what we're probably going to need to do is go in and add more boost right in this range here to help eliminate that problem so i'll show you a graph really quick of a car that would be uh, similar to, to this one where we had to make that same correction let's go find a, a table here that we can use for that and if we go look at our excel tables here you can see now instead of adding three to five percent at this one to two pound range, we're adding almost 20% fuel there. And this will oftentimes be enough to correct your problem. If it's not, you may have to put up the exhaust cam timing. You may also have to go in and look at your fuel pump duty cycle tables to make sure the fuel pump is turning on soon enough. You have big injectors and make sure it's ramping up the pressure. But the place you're going to start first is going to be on your load compensation by manifold pressure tables, both acceleration and cruise. That's it for today. That's your tidbit. Hope that helps. If you want to learn more, come to Fastune, take the class. We'll show you how to solve this problem in depth.